We shall have our first prayer. Okay, let us pray. Our kind and heavenly Father, we come before the throne of grace this afternoon, dear Lord. Thank you for the precious gift of life, Lord. Please be with us, Lord, as we're about to start our program. Help us to be able to live with something, Lord. Help us to live with all our answers and our questions answered, dear Lord. I pray all this in your loving name. Amen. We may all sit. Okay, we'll get our welcome remarks from our very own Mayor, Mr. Tim Kuhn. Good afternoon, Sally Wolani. Welcome to this great event. All protocols are indeed without doubt observed. Make sure you are make sure you feel comfortable as you get enlightened or depression and never shall we be affected by the wars of depression. I'm also going to be doing the introduction of the case. I recognize the presence of Mrs. Banda, a mental health representative from Nguje. A round of applause. <laughs> also, as a panelist, we have Tandi Lili Maglina, a student who is so passionate about mental health issues. A round of applause again. <laughs> also, we have Mr. Gabriel Hateke Kimana, a mental health expert and counselor, a round of applause. <laughs> also, we have got Uko Zimbofu, a peer educator who is passionate about mental health issues, a round of applause. <laughs> okay, we also recognize the presence of our sponsors who generously give the company EKK Day 2, a round of applause. <laughs> I would also like to recognize the presence of honorable councillors who have made sure that this event is a success. Uh, Her Worship, the BJCC Mayoress, Tuben Shengiwani. Her Worship, the Deputy Mayoress, Mosawenko Sibumani. His Worship, the Deputy Mayor, Medu Pirani. At this point in time, I would like to welcome you and make sure that you learn and no longer shall the words of depression affect you. As we embark on this journey, learning about depression, that you take everything into note and consideration, and from this point we we'll move.
and one is able to conquer the day-to-day -day challenges and make life-changing decisions. It is also small things like exercise, eating balanced diet and the healthy meals, as well as opening up to other people in your life that makes us cope with daily stresses. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, allow me to we have a small demonstration of what we think happens to someone when they're in a discouraged or they're in a depression. We have put this together because sometimes when you're going through depression, it can look as if life is coming to a stop. So I'll allow our actresses to set up even as we continue. Also, as the Junior City Council, we believe that you have to be strong in your spirit, in your mentality, in your soul and your body. Because if there's a dysfunction, if you're not balanced, if you're not happy, you cannot be a good leader. And also, we believe that the next phase of leadership is going to have uh, God models and God uh, fearing um, hearts. So we strongly know that where we are going, we have to be free in our mentality, we have to be free and be conquerors in every aspect of our lives. I will have to move from the podium if you allow me. I need, a, I don't know if there's another microphone I can use from that side. Otherwise the chair can come this side. Maybe the chair can come this side. We are not Hollywood, but we want to demonstrate what we felt, what was, what we were going through. Even as a people, or when people are downcast, when people are unhappy, or when people are discouraged. Okay, I will use this microphone. It is well. I want to also thank Sight for being here. Um, it does take a while to set up, so please bear with us. You can smile. Siaboma, <laughs> thank you so much for being part of the Junior Council. Um, but it's not yet song time. <laughs> um, uh, you have to bear with us. Please come and help the ladies. Mabusi, can you please come and help the ladies? We just want to do a small demonstration. It won't take much of your time, but we believe it's critical. So even as they set up, let's give a hand of applause to our actors, actresses. Um, they've been so gracious. Okay, we are going to start. She's just going to represent someone who's going through depression or someone who's going through depression. Okay. The experts will take us through, but I just want to give an illustration of what happens when we go through a time when we're depressed. So the first part is the mind. That even as we go through depression, we have so many heavy thoughts. That's why this helmet is dark. There's so many things that are overwhelming us. There's so many issues. I like what someone says. There's so many questions to life. There are so many things that you want answers to. There are so many voices that are crying out to say to you, give up. You can't make it. It's too much. You've been here for too long. So those are the things we go through. You just feel another day is just too much for you to go through. So your mind becomes heavy. And also we put on a dark or a black um, coat because you are in darkness, you feel isolated, you feel as if things are caving in, but that is not where we, we, we want to be. We also put a blindfold, because when you're going through a moment of discouragement, your, your vision, your perspective, and your understanding are mad. So what you think, you just focus. Revelation of who you are, a mind. I've explained the dark garments that represent sadness, sorrow, and then you are also bound. Your head, your feet are bound. You can't move. You feel like 
it's too much to start again, you feel like it's just not worth it. And also what depression will do, it will keep you there. It will keep you saying, it's too much for you to just rise up, it's too much for you to continue. So that's why we found her feet and her, in, in, in her hands. But even as we speak today, our prayer for you as Junior Council is that there will be a lifting up of the minds. So we are going to start what we believe will be happening today, even as we go through uh, our lesson and our workshop on depression. So firstly, we are going to remove the heavy thoughts, the mind that is always busy, the mind that is heavy laden, the mind that cannot even focus on tomorrow, the mind that tells you that you are alone, there is no one who cares. Those are all lies. So we want to remove lies, we want to remove deception, we want to remove heaviness. So we'll remove the heaviness from the mind. Then even as we speak to the mind, we say the mind must have pure thoughts, the mind must have righteous thoughts, the mind must be free. So we set the mind free to move forward. We say mind, you cannot be bound anymore because the lies have to stop. So we stop every lie that has been coming against our minds. Then we also look at the vision. Where we've been looking at ways in one way, we speak forth wisdom, we speak forth revelation, understanding of who you are. And that situation is so temporal. Those people that hurt you, some of them didn't even mean it, they didn't even know what they were doing. So we speak that there will be a shifting of how you view yourself, how you view what you've gone through. You will not always be in the place of pain. There's so much. You will see new things. You'll see the possibilities. You'll see the way life is taking you. Then we also want to remove, um, we put a gap on her mouth, a mask on her mouth. Why? Because sometimes when you're depressed, you can't say the right things. Sometimes you don't even want to speak. So even as we do this tonight or today, we pray that every word that you will speak will now bring forth life. life. And you will not speak negative things. You are, your life is not the end. You are beginning a new journey. So we can lose every negative word from her life, from our lives, so that we may move in truth. And then um, I need the scissors, my scissors. So we are going to set ourselves free. And also we are going to say to the hands and the feet that we're bound, you will no longer be bound, you will no longer be stagnant, you will no longer be stuck in a place of pain. So even as we cut and set ourselves free, we are saying there's possibilities for a better life, there's possibility to a new life. And then even as I come to the feet, where you've been stagnant, sometimes you feel like you've been in one place for too long. Some of you are like, why did my parents leave? Why am I still here? It's not, that's not your story. That's not where your story ends. That's not where your destiny is. It's just a small part, a small part of your journey. It's just a step in your journey. So we are going to set her feet free by cutting the ropes to say she can now walk a new walk, a new beginning. And a new day. So we hope that today is a new day for all of us. Then she's going to remove, um, before she removes the black garments, we also want to speak to her heart. Because sometimes that's where depression comes in, when our hearts have been broken, when people hurt us. So we just want to remove from the heart every pain, every place of rejection, every place of discouragement, where you felt that you were alone, you were not alone. There's a God in heaven who loves you. So we heal the broken heart and we give it a heart that is new, that is full of joy, that is full of peace. And we say, peace be still. And also we fortify her heart with the, mind of, with the blood of Jesus. And also she has the mind of Christ. So she will remove the dark garments even as she goes to sit down. Ladies and gentlemen, we are hoping that today as we go through our workshop, we will be able to, to understand and be of help because we are here to help others. We are not here just to take information home, but also that will be a vehicle to help others. So I'll ask Babusi to play a song even as we continue. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for your patience. Thank you for your ears. Nyabo. Um, can you help me out with the chills?
What a wonderful performance. Let's give it, let's give it another round of applause. Shall we all rise whilst we're waiting for our worship, our worship to be December? Come up front. Pleasant an afternoon, everyone. You may be seated. All protocol observed. The Rulawayo Junior City Council, a civic organization whose primary mandate is to be a liaison between the youth of the city and the Rulawayo City Council, has come up with a long-term project to identify issues affecting the youth of the city working towards speaking openly about these issues and finally finding a way around them. This year, the Junior Council has taken a special step to realize that we put so much emphasis on building the full being and going crazy about ensuring that our bodies are in good shape and we completely neglect the importance of a good mental health state. We therefore have decided to tackle depression today as a growing pandemic in our society, especially in the youth. We also realize that the African society that we live in prescribes that youth like us cannot go through things like stress, that depression is a myth, and we're changing that today. We're changing the fact that this is treated like a myth and something that has been hidden under the carpet. We're going to have an open discussion today where we're going to tackle depression and delve into the importance of still being able to maintain a good mental health state even despite the challenges and the obstacles that we face as we do. So I urge you, let's take this time to open up, fully engage with our panel in this topic that greatly affects us all. We no longer will continue to treat it as something that is a myth, something that is not important, and something that will continue to brush under the carpet. So please have fun, please do engage, please ask questions, and do engage with our panel. Thank you. Life should be easy peasy, lemon squeezy, not like a depressed and a stressed lemon zest. <laughs> now, I'll give this opportunity to Mrs. Vanda to tell us about the root cause of depression. Please give her a round of applause, please. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Yeah. How are we? <laughs> Don't be depressed. Yeah. Don't be depressed. I'm just going to explain what depression is and the causes of depression. I think somebody has already told us what depression is. It is a pervasive sickness, which is, which I can also say over elaborated sadness. And this sadness has a root cause. For some people, uh, okay, when you are sad, there are so many reasons why you could be sad. We have been sad at some time, but it does not necessarily mean that we are already depressed. We have been stressed, and we struggle with a lot of things, but it does not necessarily mean that we are depressed. When it, comes, when it becomes depression, it means you have lost the hope, you feel hopeless, you feel helpless, you feel worthless. And when you feel hopeless, helpless, worthless, there is anger that is turned inward and you start hating yourself. You don't like yourself. Now, what causes depression? There are so many, I would say, predisposing factors because the real root cause we are still trying to explain. There are so many theories. But two predisposing factors would be loss of a loved one, it could be you being unwell, it could be uh, moving away from a friend because children, as children, we like friends. Okay, let me specify this. I am going to specifically talk about childhood depression. 
because this is what affects us. Childhood depression and adult depression differs in their clinical presentation. So we'll talk about childhood depression. Moving away from the brain, moving from one location to another. Changing schools, being new at a school, it can predispose someone to depression because you are coming to a new environment and it is worsened by the attitude of other scholars when they start teasing you and making fun of you when you are already under a lot of stress. And the other reason could be academic failure, it could be parental divorce or separation because during that time there is a lot that happens. And in the process when those things are happening, as parents we tend to forget to explain to the children what is happening and yet they are part of it. Let's look at what do theories say causes depression. Somebody said um, it is where a child has failed to grow and mature at developmental stages. Because maybe you have had everything done for you, including decision making, at the time when you are faced with a situation to, to make a decision, you break down because we have developed that dependency on something else, on somebody else. So that dependency, when you are faced with life stressors, would make you depressed. Yeah? Then someone said, depression can also set in because of our distorted thinking. What do we mean by distorted thinking? You have a negative evaluation of the self, of yourself, as a person, as an individual. You look at yourself as a failure, as not good enough, as not doing well enough. And remember, these things, they are not just coming from somewhere else. Most cases, this is what we have been living. At times, we feel we are not appreciated. Huh? We feel, you know, our parents don't they seem not to realize we are there. They seem not to give us the time that we need. You, you, you feel less appreciated. So, in the event, you internalize this thing. Okay, maybe let me ask you a question because we're going to have a moment. I know we are scholars, isn't it? There is a time when we did not perform to our level, yeah? Where you felt that you have performed below your ability. How did it feel? How did it feel? Never before. Wow, this is an interesting group. Hmm? Okay, maybe you have done your best, you put your effort, but the caregiver, the parent, is not satisfied with your performance. What sort of comments have you Received when they were not happy. What sort of comments? Yes, they are FN. Sorry? We are all out of the phone, the phone is we are going to But according to you, will that be true? Okay, that's one. Anyone else? There's a, a hand there. Sir? Anyone else? Yes. That one. Dalisima, 
That's very true. That's very true. You are good for nothing. And you internalize this, you are good for nothing. And every time there is something to be done, what do you say to, about yourself? I'm good for nothing. Huh? And, and this, I'm good for nothing, because we have internalized it, it's affecting your thinking. When there is something to be done, you'll be the last one to do it. And that being internalized can lead to self-hate. You hate yourself, you start injuring yourself. Huh? Self-mutilating, you start injuring yourself. Some can cut themselves. We do a lot of other stuff that is very dangerous to ourselves. And this, somebody said, it is what is called learned helplessness. You have learned to be helpless. Because somebody once telling you every time that you are useless, you are useless, you are useless. You are useless. It could be comments or it could be life events. Let's take an example of a child whose mother passed on at birth. <coughs> Hypothetically speaking, this child is not in this room, it's somewhere else, right? Okay, I'm just giving this as an example. Let's give an example of a child whose parents, whose mother passes on at birth. Eh? Then he's looked after, or she, let us say they are looked after by the grandmother. Who passes on when they are about grade six? And then they are taken over by an uncle? Who is involved in an accident when they are four girls? What do we say in our culture? Why should all these things happen to me? These things are natural, they do happen in life, but because we have experienced so much pain, we tend to internalize and say, I am responsible for what is happening to me, and yet it is not your fault. It is never your fault. This one again. Hello? Yes. Remember, I see this uh, example is hypothetical. Our child is not here. And I know some of us will have experienced such things in life. Huh? Life is, is not always smooth. We have challenges. Huh? And then another one of the suspected causes of depression is a diet lacking in omega-3. Omega-3, those acids found from the eggs, margarine, and other things. They're saying it can contribute to depression. Very common in winter. Depression is very common in winter. Why? Because of lack of vitamin, uh, not lack, but reduce the sunlight, and that sunlight is needed for the synthesis of the sunlight, not necessarily vitamin D. Yes, it can be vitamin D, but there are neurotransmitters that function with the, in the presence of sunlight. So depression because of the shorter days and longer nights, more people are prone to be depressed. Now, how do we tell someone is depressed? Maybe let me ask a question. We have been stressed before, and we have been stressed before, or have you woken up one day, you feel tired, but you don't know why you are tired. You feel you just don't want to do anything, you just like you want to sleep, but you have no reason. You have so many eggs, you have a, 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 a backache, neckache, usually it's uh, the neck and the shoulder and radiating to the back, but you did not sustain any injury. Huh? You just you are feeling very sick. You are feeling sad. And at times, it may not be that. How often have you argued with your little sister or bigger brother? For no reason, yeah? They are so irritating to you. They are irritating, they don't understand, and you are quarreling. Very often. And we don't know why. 
And how often we have we felt that our parents are not understanding us. They don't understand me because, you know, I know what I want to do, but they keep saying I'm not doing the right thing. Those are some of signs of stress also that can indicate depression. However, uh, teenagers, when they are depressed, The, cl the clinical presentation slightly differs from the adults. Because adults, yes, teenagers can be sad, you can be withdrawn, huh? you can fail uh, to listen, to pay attention, and stuff like that. But the other side of childhood depression is aggression. You become aggressive. You, are easily, you easily get angry and you want to fight. For very small things you want to fight. And um, some children will not attend school. What do you call that? Truancy. That you leave home telling your parents you're going to school, but you don't get to school. Some uh, teenagers may start abusing substances. Alcohol, drugs, just for the fun of it. Why? Because you think if you are going to take that, you are going to feel good. Remember, this feeling good is for this time when you are under the influence of the drug, but the problem will remain. Some feeling, which is a sign of depression, which can be a sign of depression to children. Lying. Somebody who previously was not doing those things. It's a sign. Small children, younger children, they go to school. How do us adults treat you? What do we usually do? Hmm? What do we usually do? We get a beating, huh? What are we doing? We are out of you. <laughs> yes. As parents, we also don't know how. With We have quite a number of children who are at November month. You know when November month for the girls and the boys are at Percy Watson. And if honestly we could talk to those children, you will find that some of them there is an underlying depression, which is very difficult to diagnose, even for the health workers. Childhood depression is very difficult to diagnose with the, this behavior, which we call the sort of almost antisocial behavior. Because when you lie, when you steal, when you run away from school, you usually want to punish you. Eh? You get detention. How often do you not attend school and your teacher comes and says, can you please tell me what happened before being sent for? Before you are sent for detention. How often does that happen? So, depression is real. Depression is real. And for some of the factors of the clinical features, it's self-mutilative behaviors. Because you hate yourself so much, you don't like yourself so much, you start injuring yourself. Some people cut themselves, Others will take dangerous drugs, substances. If I get it better. Okay. 
Um, now, after talking about the clinical features, maybe can I ask a person how many of those clinical features can you did you identify? Maybe it could be you. How many of those can you relate to? Yes, dear. Uh huh. Cutting self and doing drugs. Very common. You cut your and and when you are cutting yourself, most cases is because you feel there is no one who is understanding you. People just don't understand you. And you, you, you are angry with yourself, you are in pain, but you don't know how to deal with this pain, and then you start cutting yourself. And it is a serious problem. And in the suicidal statistics, teenagers come after men. Number one at the top are men, then we have teenagers. Teenagers don't usually miss it. Huh? Teenagers usually commit suicide. And then we have the elderly, and lastly, we have women. But when it comes to attempts, suicidal attempts, we have women at the top. Huh? So when somebody is, is suicidal, when somebody is talking about suicide, how do you tell somebody is suicidal? One, they'll start asking vague questions about death and dying. Yes, there is an element of wanting to know, but when somebody asks you, in the event I die, who will miss me? Or is a friend, and you think you are joking, you think you are playing, you, you are playing, and somebody says, in the event I'm dying, if in the event I am dying, will you miss me? That's a red flag. That is a red flag. And most teenagers who commit suicide would have said something like that to someone at some point and who only realize when they are gone. Then the second thing is giving away valuable possessions. Things that they hold so close to their hearts, things that they love, they start giving those away. Start querying, there is a problem. Remember, teenagers may or may not be sad. They may not be depressed like adults where you are sad, you are crying, you are weeping. That may not be the same. Otherwise, the clinical presentation may be different. With the hyperactivity, you know, they become talkative. Just out of the ordinary, they are talkative, they are abusing drugs, they are doing sort of things. That is a cry for help. It's a cry for help. Then how do we assist them? I think this one is going to be a discussion for one of our panelists who is going to talk about the management of depression because he's a, a counselor, I suppose. I think for me, I was, I was going to explain to you what depression is, how do you uh, recognize somebody with signs of depression. I don't know whether at this point I can entertain persons. Do we have persons? <coughs> yes, dear. Yes. Okay, manic. Okay, if you look at the classification of uh, depression in what is used to diagnose, we have Depression is called hypomania. Um, a depressed person, at times they swing between two states. One minute they are very sad, they are depressed, they are down there. The next minute they are on the extremes. They are hyperactive, they are talkative. So at times we are swinging between these two states, which is hypomania and manic phases. But there is a condition, a, a mental condition that is called mania. 
where somebody has got, um, they are mentally ill, hyperactive, pressure of speech. You know, they can say a lot of things that will take you about 20 minutes to explain, they explain it in three minutes. They have flight of ideas. You cannot understand the, you cannot follow an idea. When somebody is talking, isn't you supposed to follow the idea, the meaning and stuff like that. To them, a lot of things come into mind as they are talking and they'll jump from one topic to another. That is the manic phase. Yes. But the DSM class, the classification of, of depression under what we are using now, we are no longer saying depression, we are not having a hypomania and mania and other things. Depression one, depression two, which can be very confusing. But anyway, that's another state of depression. Yes. When, when you, they feel they are not, someone is not even realizing they exist. How often do you get home and say, uh, uh, okay, you don't say, and, and maybe, and then they'll take time to sit down and say, how was your day, what happened? At times it's also because of our busy schedules, but at times we need that. At times we need that to show someone that you appreciate them, you are there for them. Remember, we make mistakes. How do you discipline a child who has made a mistake? I'm not like this. I'm not like this. I'm not like this. You know, those are things that parents say because we don't know how as parents and children, they will feel unloved, unwanted, unworthwhile. And that can be depression. And the other reason why we have been so quiet about childhood depression is it has to do with our culture. There is a death in the family. What do we do to the children? Send them away. Don't say anything to them. Huh? It's like they don't grieve. But remember, it's a member of the family they knew, most probable, they loved. And they don't even know what has happened to this person the next minute, they are not there, and no one is saying anything to them. Huh? And when parents are having problems, because children have got this thing, the natural ecocentrism in children. You know, when children, they always feel that everything revolves around them. Huh? Now, when parents are fighting, children usually blame themselves. Because half the time they get entangled in those things. And as a result, we have not been taking care of children during those times. Just to talk, sit down and talk to your child, send them for counseling. At times maybe ask their opinion, especially elder children, not elder. Or it's important that you ask. I know as parents, Half the time we don't usually get to that. A, a, a friend of mine, um, I'm no longer a parent. This is what I've come to believe. I'm no longer a parent to my children. I'm now a stakeholder. We are stakeholders. That is, we sit down and discuss. And if we could understand it from that point, I think a lot of other things get better. But however, as children, we also have a responsibility to understand our parents. They do go through a lot and they also feel no one is there for them. That we develop 
a relationship, a trusting relationship with our parents so that we can talk to them, so that we can ask them questions. Remember, teenagers, you are going through a time when you are trying to identify your own identity, your own evaluation of self. Yes, dear. Okay. Yes, that is very true. You have, you've got this insight. You now understand that we should develop that, pro, that, that relationship. At that point, you now have what we call major depression. This is when you are swinging between the manic and the hypomanic phase because one time you are down, the next minute you are up. Of course, at times we do feel blue. At times, you wake up in the morning, you, you, you are not happy and stuff. It could be stress. Eh? Stress level, because stress level zero, nothing happens. Stress level one, we are forced to do what we are doing right now. Stress level two, we start showing symptoms of, 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 of slight symptoms of, of, of an illness. Eh? Level three and four, we are sick. But with depression, if it is sustained for maybe longer than a month, four weeks, then it, that can classify, it can be classified as depression. But at times we do have, especially girls, ladies, following week you are okay. It's not necessarily depression.
reality. Because um, there are a lot of factors. There are a lot of factors. Parents are always, you know, we are busy, we are trying to make things work and stuff like that. And then we tend to forget to give our children love. Now, you turn to your friends and your friends, you start doing things because that's the only way you think makes you feel better. But that is maladaptive. You are now into drugs and substances. Now, what do you do? This is when we are saying, come, let us talk. Come, let us talk. It's not something that you're going to deal with tomorrow and be done. And even with the counseling, it's not you go for counseling today and then tomorrow you are fine. No. When you start your counseling sessions, that would be you, you'd be coming, we are talking, and at some point, we'll ask your parents to come, and then we can go on from there. But as, 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 as scholars, how do you assist each other? Maybe we need some programs at school where we are going to assist each other. Starting point. Assisting each other. Instead of um, pulling each other to using and abusing substances, we may do different things. I understand the situation and up the time we deal with um, such cases. And at times when we say to people, uh, you need counseling, you are already thinking, I don't have money to see it. We have got a dad, we have got a dad, but how uh, free are you to come to him to tell it? Why to walk to him to tell it? Uh, people think I'm now in it. Can you talk to your parents? Parents, so that they are not going to accuse you for talking about their issues to strangers. 
Eh? So please, come, let's talk. That was a very good person and a valid contribution. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Okay, I'll take more persons. Yes. Yes, at the back. Um, yes, I, I think I mentioned that parental separation affects children in so many ways. Why? Because children love both parents equally. And now with the suicidal ideation, suicidal ideation is considered an emergency in mental health. It is an emergency. So what we do or what we will maybe if you ask me what am I going to do for you, I will cancel. But if you've got somebody who is suicidal, the first thing is, in as much as possible, don't leave them alone. Don't leave them alone. Because when they are alone, this is where they are going to go over their plan, perfect it, and they can still, and, and then they can go ahead and implement it. Ask them, when do they want to commit suicide? How? Do they want to commit suicide so that we find out if there is a plan? If they don't have a plan, the better, because you might find time. But if they have a plan, you call 119. That's child line, huh? 116, child line, huh? And when you have done that, stay with the person. And this is where at times you need to reach your confidentiality. Because we have promised someone that what we are going to talk about is just going to be between you and me. But now because there is a threat to life, you break that confidentiality. You tell someone else. So that this person would then be taken either to a um, psychologist who's going to counsel them or they are brought to an institution where we are going to counsel them. But the most important thing is when somebody is show or we have picked indications that somebody is suicidal. Ask them how do they want to do it, when do they want to do it, and then you can ask certain, you can have a contract, talk to the person, try and make them see that there is still hope. There is help available. They are still wanted. And when we had that contract with them, you then can assist them to seek Counseling services. And I suggest that, um, say, do not leave this place without talking to any one of us. Isn't it? Don't be ashamed of depression because it is real. Don't be ashamed. And when we say you are in men, and this is another thing, that's why societal uh, rates are higher in men than in females. Number two, I think our thing is English, it is 14 words, 14 words, eh? 
and the nine of the fourteen wards are male wards. And a male admission ward, as of yesterday morning, there were 133 male patients in one ward, one of the nine wards. But the female admission ward is 43. Because our culture says, Start by talking because this is how we treat people. You, 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 you use a defense to supply the people. Just like and you play the pregnant. You have to survive in that you have to go in, but the fact that it is bothering you. Because we did not go the necessary stage of recovery. When pain of loss, there is no way where you can deal with besides going through pain. You can't go over it, you can't go beside you can't go. You have to talk about it, not supply. Just say. But maybe your practical solution would be, my parents are separated. Who can bring them together? You won't be able to do that. But the reason why that is still affecting you today is because we are carrying that in your heart. We are carrying that in your head. And you, you, you did not really, yes, that was a way of dealing with it. But it is still affecting you. So when you come to me, we will talk. And maybe change the way you see things. That may be the starting point. At times, it may not be necessarily changing. It may be, if it is working for you, and it is not giving you problems, it's not going to be okay, but I want to believe that you still carry that pain with you, and this pain is, is taking over your life. Evaluation of the world, the future, and the world. So, we still need to talk. So, we can come and we can talk. And then maybe if there are organizations, organizations out there that can give you other practical solutions, maybe fit to those ones. But the issue of bringing parents together, we may not be able to do that unless and until we talk to both parents separately so that they understand that they have a responsibility towards me.
Because parents need to understand whether you are separated or not separated, they still have a responsibility towards you. And I, I want to believe the law says they, got a, they must got a equal access to talking and singing. Without the mic, can you all hear me? So, this entertainment is not peace, but it's peace in the world. That's the anticipation of this. But one thing I'm sure of is that we never lose hope. We hope for the water streams. In times like this, we live, people, we live with people who will criticize you, people who will evaluate you, examine you, 
and discuss about you. We discuss, we live with people who will hurt you, only to realize that they are feeling the quality of your thoughts. We live with people whom you will share all your problems with, and on the other hand, they'll be glad that you actually have those problems. We live with people who will claim to be your friends when they have found you friendly. When I first heard of poetry, I understood it as a game. A game of poetry. Trust me, I know that we live with the ruthless and the heartless people. We live in a terrific and the horrific world. For many years, I have talked of social issues, but I rejected to talk of the divine issues. I have talked of the untold stories, but I rejected to talk of the divine stories. For many years, I have talked of pending issues, but they rejected to talk of the sensitive issues. I only realized my mistakes when I met a new friend. His name is Jesus. He would enter faith and delight upon. So, it happened that one day, he took off his jacket. He became flesh. He ate what men eat. He drank. What men drink. He did this all in a plot to demonstrate his everlasting and eternal love. Now the Lord is a universal God. If he has power to command nature, what more of your sorrows? What more of your stress? Your frustration, what more of your depression? I live with you with something to recite every day. There is still more.
Wow, what an amazing case. Am I right? Am I right? Am I right? Beautiful. Now we give this chance to the mental health education, Tanya Lili. A round of applause, please. So that means most of us don't understand. Or we do understand, we just don't want to respond. Because it makes it easy for us to converse. I'm not here to teach you, I'm here to share, and you share as well. Is that fair? Okay, so I'll ask again. How many of you understand what mental health education is, or mental health, generally? Okay, fine, I'll give you an example. Um, it's, before I start well, sharing what I have, it's more or less like peer pressure. So most of the time, we are told, okay, what's the first thing that comes into your mind when you think of peer pressure? Any? Okay, why I'm asking is because it's two-sided. So there's obviously good mental health. Oh, you want to answer? Yes. Okay, I think peer pressure is negative influence, okay? Oh, okay. You go, okay, everyone has an opinion. If you don't agree, share your opinion before we go up like any further. I've read on either side. So you guys have got a different opinion. Does anyone disagree that it's, it's negative influence? Yes? Yes. So it could be positive. Thank you so much. Thank you as well. So it could be positive or it could be negative influence, right? So same applies to um, mental health before we get to the education part. So it could be good mental health or negative mental health in this case, or bad mental health, right? So, like this is what I already explained, there's several influences or drivers that get you to a certain state. We agree. Just like how for you to move from O level to A level, you need to achieve something. Well, set by someone, somewhere. Okay, but in this case, you control your mind. Are we together? If I lose you, talk to me. It, it makes it easy. Like I said, we are conversing. It's a conversation. I'm here to share. You will probably teach me as well. I'm still a student, so we will share what you know. Like how she shared. Now we have an idea on how everybody else or half the people feel. Okay. So, um, you understand that. Okay, this is famous. It's not really famous, but during my time of being a high school student, I used to hear this famous statement from the people that were around me that um, there's an abbreviation or acronym, I don't know if I'm using those terms right, which goes as GIGO, G-I-G-O. It basically means garbage in, garbage out. Do you understand? So if you're going to, like I said, mental health has to do with your mind. As much as there's peer pressure to the external influence and all those other things, when it comes to your mind, it's your heart, yours. You control it. You, you, I'm sure you've heard, yeah, you should have um, self-esteem, you should be confident. Those are all things generated from within. As much as there's external influence, it comes from inside. We're together. Good, good. Okay, maybe we should do this. So if you agree, you can thumbs up. In case you disagree. So that this is a bit fun. It's a discussion. Are you okay? You guys are a bit quiet. I might not give you enough attention. Okay. Please be alive. One day we'll be here and we need the support. So, um, as I was still saying it, when it comes to um, mental health, you notice that, as I was saying, that they are drivers. As much as they influence influences, which probably put you in a certain state. So you could have, like what had been explained prior, that you could be told certain things at home. Yeah, I'm like, you know, things like that. It comes with the growing up part. 
to know her. I also went through it. I'm sure the elders went through a certain portion of it, if not all of it, because we all come. have a hand in it, okay? So you find that you've got your friends, they could influence your mental health, you've got the media, internet, yes. You guys know I'm smiling, because like this generation is just, it's our thing, like yes, internet is our thing. Do we agree? I'm not afraid with you, it's fine, but I think it's our thing. Like how many of us are on social media? Let me start this. through a situation of being told so for your A levels who's like I'm a scientist my mom wanted me to be a doctor and I did doing medicine I'm not even doing that at mass I'm doing very for science and health it has nothing to do with medicine okay so okay so those who live there have they're the ones who are just the experience so you'll get to a point where maybe there's certain expectations at home maybe you're the first boy you know the parents expect you to to be an example to your siblings, you know? Or maybe there's those family like family 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 because at some point, I am a mom was a doctor, so I so you can imagine. So we should look at which probably looks resembling me in a few years to come. You understand? <laughs> so you, you, you get to wonder, but I couldn't really get home and be like, I, I can't do medicine. You know, chemistry is doing things to me. I can't. I can't. So what that I remember, I, I did my own way to to a point where, um, I remember there was a um, consultation. My physical science teacher went, my mom used to come to me, so she was out of order. How is she doing in school? So I told her she shouldn't let you start for physical science. It's why that she does it, because if she does, I can guarantee you it's a me. She can't let you start for Not that maybe I was bad, but there were certain things that I was being told. I would be put under so much pressure, you know, and I'm thinking, I can't support my mom. She's paying me. By the way, I was raised by a single mother. So you're thinking, okay, I've got brothers. Who's probably done more in life? My eldest brother is a chef. The other one is a social scientist person. So you're thinking, okay, everyone is established. It's me now. And there's like a gap of heaven in between me and my elder brother, the one that I come after. So you're thinking, okay, so these people are all looking at me. Do you understand? They put certain pressure on me. But eventually, I can be honest with myself so that I was honest with everybody else. So like, going back to the same point, mental health. Everyone saying mental, mental health. Mental health. Like you are You're the one who controls what's inside. And then on the school setup part, some of us have experienced bullying. Some of us are actually bullies. I will be stopped, it's not a good thing. But yeah, we're not just to really focus on bullying. But yeah, some of us have experienced bullying. I was from those
All those people that have been to all those areas, they will say things to you. to the point Okay, to stay in a certain 
I'll be very old to be in a certain state of mind. So if you know, if you listen to, um, like for an example, there are people who can't study in noisy places. There are some people who can function totally well, really close to a bar or a noisy place where people are running with their friends. So if you know there's a certain place or environment that you actually flourish better, invest more in that. It helps you mentally, so to say. Because you find a situation that if you don't do that, that's when you become frustrated. Sometimes you can keep dying into depression. That's when certain things start coming up. Um, maybe to share, I also had, I think from the diagnosis that we, I'm hearing from Mrs. Panda, I'm sure I had my fair share of depression in 2015. Because in that particular year, I lost my mom. And in 2015, I was writing my a book. So the, the passing one happened in February, and I was going to write late into the year. So you can imagine if you have to adjust to certain things. You no longer can call anyone and tell them, I need this, I need that. You have to understand that some people don't have the basic needs that you want. Because there's a difference between needs and wants. We know that, right? Priority. Maybe with my mom, I could tell her, I want this, and then you get it. But now, with the people that are around, you need to understand that you can't be first. There are the people. Friends around, I isolated myself from everyone. And it didn't work because I was reading a certain mental state in my head. To the point that I became comfortable with waking up in the morning and being alone. If the whole house leaves you, go to the job, you know, the whole house becomes empty, I'll still feel I'm fine. But then I discovered that was only destroying me slowly. It was taking big chunks out of me. Because, like, what did they need to understand? I would get angry with anything. If someone doesn't understand, I go, why? It's, it's clear, it's evident. Why do you get it? Do you understand? So, um, in such a case, it becomes a challenge. And then for your energy, that generally goes with your element and your environment. Because if you find a place where you actually flourish better, it means you're going to manifest your energy, generate your energy. And usually, as I say, the brain being your mental hub or the architecture of everything, what basically you think about is exited out, it in, it out. So if you're feeling okay in your mind, you probably feel okay around other people, or you make other people feel okay. And then, um, okay, so to wrap up, maybe to give you um, ways on actually coming up with a good mental health. So first of all, make sure you've got positive environment around you. Surround yourself with people or things that actually make you feel better or feel good about yourself or anything like that. And more about it all, be honest with yourself. Um, invest more time in the environment that, that you flourish in. I've already highlighted that. Make sure you do um, self-introspection. Look at what you've done, how you got there, the progress you've made. Give yourself an applause. For Like you've made it. And then obviously you move on to the next thing that needs to be done. Like that, like that, until you get to somewhere. And then um, get a mentor as well. Mentors are very wise and advice. It's good for you to have a mentor because again, this is when in the video we say um, in the language of our country. You can't walk alone to a place that you've never been before. We have come to be now and our feet. We are like never obviously to be. I can't just wait up and say I need to do I've never been here. I will definitely get lost. So if you know, if you feel maybe other data, you know, parents, teachers are too, too far for you based on the difference in the generation. If you're in form four, whatever, get someone who's slightly ahead because they've already walked that journey before. You understand? If you feel maybe just a scholar, you're not going to understand. Get someone, I don't know, in our phase, university or something, but get someone to actually direct you. Someone has the same um, beliefs, someone who has the same ideas, or someone who 
keeps for the same thing as similar. That way it's easier for them to coach you in the right direction. Okay. And then also um, have principles and boundaries. You can't just blow over based on anything. Sometimes when we are moving to a certain part, we are also going because everyone is going. Or sometimes when we are we are supposed to do something, you are taking you know, part because everyone is doing it. Have ground rules for yourself. That way you manage to control what enters your mind, garbage in, and what goes out. Because definitely what, what's inside you definitely mind manifest. It's So in that period of time, I was in, in Form 2, that's if I remember well. Um, basically, I was out of, out of sync with society and with my peers. I didn't understand how they thought, how they worked. People that I learned with would describe me, would describe me as weird. So, so upon that realization, the worst mistake that I did was isolation. I was like, you know what, it's their own opinion, so I will isolate myself, I am my own person, I will fix my problems. Someone here on earlier said that they believe that they can fix their own problems, which I really do not advise. Because the moment you isolate yourself, you sort of live in your own world and in your own space. And that is problematic because you lose the touch of how a normal human being functions, how you are supposed to react, how you are supposed to deal with your emotions. And as we are adolescents here, most of us are in school, it, it affects you even the way you interact with your peers and the way you perform in school, which is problematic because at the end of the day, you then get stressed on top of that. And that's the other thing that leads a person to sleep into depression. The culmination of all these factors. For me, another precursor to my depression was anxiety. Anxiety is a constant state of worry and a constant state of questioning yourself. I had self-esteem issues, particularly because of the segregation that I got from my peers. So it was a really tough moment. But then, how I got to pick up myself from that was self, through self actualization and self-realization, which I feel we all need to take up. Be the best that you can be. Every morning, sit down in front of a mirror and ask yourself, who am I, what do I like, and how can I make myself happy? Focus on those three things if you don't want to question um, your self-esteem or your self-reliance. As Ms. Tandiga said, be honest with yourself. Work uh, with things that you can do. Personally, I did my A-levels last year and I'm currently in the process of enrolling at the University of Cape Town to do medicine. It's something that I'm passionate, I'm passionate about and I'm able to do. But then, the circumstance and the situation can be different for you. 
Don't let society detect to you what you want to do. And the, the worst of the detectations come from the people that love us the most. That is our parents and our families. Sometimes they put huge expectations on us. And in actual fact, what we need to do is make them realize that that is not the path that you want to pursue. Ironically, part of how I got to heal and move on from the phase of depression was through taking up debate and public speaking, which if you think about it with the desired career path that I want to do, doesn't go hand in hand. But then that was something that I liked and something that I still continue to practice. Because in that I got to express myself, I got to share my own views and own opinions, I got to help other people um, to basically be the best that they can be. And that's also what I'm encouraging that all of us do. Let's find things that make us happy and find things that contribute to other people's lives. And a typical teenager spends more time in school than they do at home with their family because they spend time in school like the entire day. So I assume all of us here are friends that are still in school. And one advice that one of us, let us be the let us the problem. Do not spread it around, do not make it a joke, because that exa that's exactly what will let them sleep into depression. And the worst that could happen is they commit suicide. And you wouldn't want to remain with the guilt of being the one who caused that suicide, even though there may be other factors. So let's be good friends. Let's be there for our friends, and let's not judge the situations that they come from. Let's be together, let's be a family. Because sometimes, as someone said, the love that you get from the people that are around you may exceed that which you get from home, which may be as a result of other situations. So the best that you can do is be there for your peers, be there for them, encourage each other, and stay in the right path. And if ever you feel depressed, never, ever try to find a coping mechanism. Do not try to take drugs as a means of suppressing it, because you are not suppressing it, you are just making it worse. Every time you wake up from the fix, every time you come back to reality, it will be worse than the last time. And the worst that could happen is you are now feeding off an addiction which will become a problem on top of the problems that you are facing. And if problems mount on you, it becomes problematic. <laughs> <laughs> so let us try to avoid things that increase the problems that we have. Fair and fine, stress is there for all students. There are pressures from school, sometimes you don't do well. Encourage yourself, work hard. But do not let your performance deter you from pursuing your dreams. There were times where I failed, I performed dismally, but then I didn't let that deter me or stop me from pursuing that which I want to do. But then it was a motivating and a, a stepping stone to where I am right now. So with, with all that said, uh, before I finish, Last year, I read an article. It said that 65% of the people in Bulawayo have mental health issues. The way that article was placed out was sort of in a marketing way. But then, when I read through it, that's when I realized that depression, anxiety, mental health issues, they are real and they are real. So the first thing that you need to do in your life when you feel that you are depressed is admit that you have a problem and seek help. 
Not try to solve it on your own because you will slip further down into that hole and it will become difficult for you to get out. Where professionals or people that can help you utilize those people, utilize the resources that are there, so that you can be the best that you can be. You stay happy. And with that, thank you. Thank you for your time. Thank you for listening. Thank you so much. Rachel, are you in? Down. That is the depression. There's depression in the economy. Right now, when you economical depression, there are depression in the, in the atmosphere. That is where you feel flat. That is where you feel that. What you are used to support, you are used to, it doesn't work. Whatever mechanism you use as defensive mechanism, it doesn't work. Besides, what I want to say is to say who is uh, the candidate for depression? Everyone. Depression is universal in terms of time and in terms of, of space. There is no one who is uh, have a, a kind of uh, uh, vaccination against depression. Be a white, be a black, be a teenager, be a, a child, be from the north or the south. Depression can happen to anyone. And depression is not caused by circumstances. Because you can go through the same circumstances and you don't react to the same thing, the same way. The way I, you can help someone have lost uh, how many people and uh, he, he takes it into his circle of support. Because don't forget, you are not alone. As a counselor, we use a, a, an approach called systemic counseling. We say, an individual as an entity is not isolated. He is in a, an environment. We are talking about positive environment. If you have an environment, your parents, your friends, whatever are supporting, you might go through good time and not be depressed. Why do you have people who don't support you, blame you, who don't listen even? Because often depression is what? It's one way of having your view your horizon becoming narrow and narrow until it came to the end, you, you, you hit the brick wall. You go to either suicide, often to suicide. You can't get suicide without passing through depression. So it is why as a cancer, uh, there is no treatment for depression beside the person who is depressed. What you do as a cancer is to empower that person through a process where he can 
find a solution by identifying the problem, by accepting, as you are saying, that he has a problem. A counselor can help someone who, does, who denies his, his problem, who is not committed to be helped. What is counseling is a relationship between someone, a, a counselor, who has been trained for that, has techniques, who is ready to help. While the other one, when a client has a problem and he's feeling that he needs help, help, he needs help. If he doesn't need help, he can't do anything. In this particular case of depression, particularly, I'm talking about the youth, they are the youth. They have said about many causes of depression. But as a youth, there's this rejection. Often, Madame, uh, Ms. Vanda was talking about Madame's depression. Ms. Vanda was saying uh, self-evaluation. What is self-evaluation? To make it understood very well. You know, when you're young, there's a way you perceive yourself. You believe that you're handsome, you believe that you're a very pretty girl, beautiful girl, you believe that you're whatever. And suddenly, there's another way other people judging, evaluating. Imagine if you pass, you hear someone say, Look at that one now. He pretends he believes that he's a, 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 a boy, a man. Ha! I would not even not talk to him. And you overhear that. Could you imagine the difference between your self evaluation and the evaluation of others? And this is what you want to be. You aim, you go. And often this depression, for example, you are finishing A level. Sometimes you have no, your goal is now to be graduated. But you don't have another goal after that. At the middle and long term. Sometimes what happens, I have achieved it, I've been graduated, what next? Then you can keep falling, falling that kind of uh, confusion, no, 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 no direction. So I, I think that is the thing to have. I think the, the solution most of them have been said. Admit that you have a problem. The counselor or any professional who is in the psychological field will help you to identify the problem. Because often you don't come with the, the, the problem, it is here. You come with what you call a presenting problem. I have had it. I feel when you dig deeper, when you explore, as you say, you find it, can you find it the client to the problem. So, what I advise, and it's not even advice, what I say, on one side, if someone is suffering from depression or feeling like that, please, Admit, don't withdraw, don't isolate yourself. Try to talk to someone. Try to seek help. And also, for us, like the parents and the friends and what, and the professionals and the teachers, be attentive, pay attention to those indicators that we're talking about. Why this child is isolating himself? Why this child is not playing with others? And when it comes, try to initiate that person. Say, sometimes I see that you are doing that. Now you know what is happening. There's a way of approaching initiating. Be attentive to that. Sometimes someone comes, you say, ah, you start thinking of your own problem. You don't even listen to him, you listen to yourself. Sometimes you say, ah, we are talking about what? You lost your mother, you know what? Ah, dear. Me, I lost uh, my mother and my father and my women. What are you talking about? Another way comes saying I lost my, my cat. You say, ah, cat. What is that? But the cat, if you dig deeper, it means that maybe it is the only being but that was left to, he has to talk to, to play with. Maybe he has lost the whole family. The cat was only the only thing which could support that person. So don't say, ah, right, but you are crazy, what can you do? No, dig deeper. Listen, put aside everything. If someone comes to your office or to your room as a student, whatever, say, I'm ready to share with you. What can you do? Don't say, ah, don't waste my time. I think uh, there was a lot of things, but uh, as the time is going, uh, I can talk here. To say there are a lot of things, a self evaluation. There is also this uh, biased comparison among the youth. She has a cell phone, she has a whatever, whatever. This distorted comparison. 
can compare yourself to someone who is very cleverly and stupid. And when you distort your comparison, you don't see what is good, what you did well, and accept it and say, yeah, I can't do that. You do your, 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 what you call it, your self evaluation in a positive way. Don't go to compare yourself to someone who's him. The circumstances may be not the same, but you and what you next. That is, very, very, that is something. There is another thing which is killing the youth today. These early marriages, these early sex activities, these pregnancies. They create what you call the ambivalent, ambivalent feelings. Ambivalent feelings is when you are between love and hate. You are you don't do well before. You were pregnant a girl, you are forced to marry her. In the first place there was no love. There was maybe experience. And then you are forced to live together. I was discussing with uh, some. And then when you have you go together, some those things of uh, enjoying yourself bones is gone. And then you are those who are supposed to stay together. There's no more of you. You, have, you love, you, but you hate. You feel like you, this person is wasted in my youth and uh, vice versa. So these things also are very, very important to you know about it, how to handle the protective uh, style and whatever. So seek someone to help you, be open and be ready to be happy. Thank you for organizing. I'm sorry, uh, first of all, as I'm here, I'm not here for contact. I'm, I'm in my personal capacity. Yesterday, uh, your worship uh, has come uh, to say there's uh, something interesting in the youth to come, please. And uh, there was um, on the border the other time, uh, yesterday, uh, the Botswana border. I said, okay, I'm going to, I'm, I'm coming. I'm coming, I like to work with the youth. That's number one. Number two, it was says a uh, mental health expert. Uh, Mr. Uh, Banda is here. Uh, I think uh, we have to do that more. <laughs> so, but uh, I'm happy to be here to be sharing. Uh, I'm, I'm retired uh, education psychologist and the counselor, but I'm going to see counselor and counselor in this context. And even for long. So thank you very much. We have a good day. Thank you so very much. I hope we've all benefited. So now we'll have um, the screening of the videos. A round of applause, please. I see you are now, I think we're not tired, you're not cold, but please, just a few more minutes. We're almost done. Thank you for being patient. You are not alone. Speak up and be your own champion.
the corporate social responsibility. So we have decided to um, join hands with initiatives and projects that seek to highlight, that seek to uh, talk about mental health. Hey everybody, how are you doing? My name is Nawaz so Ndogo, the founder of Ikekeletu, our cake. Ikekeletu is a culturally themed cake. It is made to, to uh, celebrate, to showcase our culture and our heritage and our identity. Uh, so as part of our uh, corporate social responsibility, by the way, this is the only authentic cake with the corporate social responsibility. So we have decided to um, join hands with initiatives and projects that seek to highlight, that seek to uh, talk about mental health, mental illness in our communities. So uh, we have decided to join hands with already established uh, initiatives and uh, we'll also come up with some ideas of how we can uh, talk about mental health, about mental illness, and see how we can support, how we can help those that are affected uh, by uh, different mental illnesses. So uh, there's quite a number of experts that will be taking part uh, in... Hey everybody, how are you doing? My name is Ngabaya Zondlovo, the founder of Ikekeletu, our cake. Ikekeletu is a culturally themed cake. It is made to uh, celebrate, to showcase our culture and our heritage and our identity. Uh, so as part of our uh, corporate social responsibility, by the way, this is the only authentic cake with the corporate social responsibility. So we have decided to um, join hands with initiatives and projects that seek to highlight, that seek to uh, talk about mental health, mental illness in our communities. So uh, we have decided to join hands with uh, with already established uh, initiatives and uh, we'll also come up with some ideas of how we can uh, talk about mental health, about mental illness, and see how we can support, how we can help those that are affected uh, by uh, different mental illnesses. So uh, there's quite a number of experts that will be taking part uh, in um, in different forums. So for uh, this particular forum, the um, junior mayors uh, in Blauayo, uh, 
coming together and uh, talking about a mental illness. We just thought we could uh, collaborate on, uh, on this and um, highlight a number of uh, issues that we need to be attending to. So the first thing, just to define our corporate social responsibility, uh, we'll be selling our cakes, our culturally themed cakes, the cakes that tell a story. Uh, you can go on our uh, platforms, on our social media platforms, and then you can learn more about Ikekeletu and the philosophy around Ikekeletu, our cake. So out of the sales, out of our cake sales, we have pledged that 3% from every sale will be going towards corporate social responsibility. And how that looks like is that 3% um, of uh, money that is generated from the sales will go towards uh, helping out in um, programs like the one that we're having today with the junior mayors. Uh, so we will contribute towards uh, you know, refreshments will contribute towards uh, whatever is required for those programs to be a success. So we are really glad to be uh, in partnership with the Junior City Council and uh, working towards coming up with ideas of how we can tackle uh, mental illness. So there's quite a number of aspects today and I know that you're going to touch a number of uh, different uh, topics and you'll be able to uh, provide uh, rich you know, uh, information on how we can uh, work together. So mental health is not really just an absence of illness. It is a, uh, you know, the stability that uh, one, uh, you know, it's about emotional, psychological, and social uh, stability and well-being. So it's about how you connect with others around you, how you communicate uh, with others, and how you perceive your environment. Uh, what I'd like to talk about today really is uh, this concept of uh, self-care. It's very important, it's very key, and I'd advise uh, our juniors, our youths, to really pay attention to this because it's very important. It's a very simple concept of uh, self-care. So for you to uh, reduce... Oh.